In most desktop environments, when you delete a file, it isn't deleted, it's moved into a new folder. On Windows, it's called the recycling bin. On Linux, it's called the trash. On Apple, I think it's called garbage, and it probably looks something like that. Because Apple's fancy, that, that's the joke. But when you're in a shell and you delete a file, it's basically like setting that file on fire. It's pretty much not coming back. You want to create a shell script that doesn't permanently delete a file. You want to move it into the trash or the recycling or the garbage can. We can do that. And although pretty much these are just folders on your system, I don't know if there's more to the process than just moving it into that folder. Luckily, uh, when I searched, I found out that there is a way to properly move stuff into your trash can, recycling bin, garbage bin, whatever you want to call it. First off, let me uh, clarify that we are working with a Linux desktop system here. Uh, obviously, if you're writing shell scripts and other systems, they handle trash differently. We are going to use a program called GIO, which is developed by the GNOME project, or GNOME or GNOME, however you want to say it. GIO stands for GNOME Input Output. It's a library, okay? You may or may not have this on a system. It's commonly installed these days on a lot of systems, especially if you're running the GNOME desktop. I don't, so I had to install it by myself separately. It is in my repositories, but it's not just under GIO. It's part of a package to install it on a Debian-based system, it's sudo apt install lib glib2.0-dev. Once you install that, you will have GIO, which does a lot of different things. And again, we're just looking at using it for trash today. So here is my trash. I've emptied it. There's nothing in there. I'm in a folder with a couple of files. If I GIO trash and give it one of these file names, now I can list out, you can see that file is gone. If I look at my trash, you can see it's there. I can click on that and restore it. And now it is back. So that is how you would use it. Just GIO trash and the file name. Why would you want to do this? Well, I'll give you a scenario on why I looked this up the other day on how to do Because most of the time, if I need to delete something, I just delete it. I don't even think about trash most of the time. In fact, when I'm in my GUI interface in my file browser, lots of times I'll hit shift delete, which usually skips the trash can altogether. Uh, but I was writing a script. Uh, let me type this out. This is my script right here. So what does this do? So I work with the Godot game engine a lot. And for sound effects and stuff, it's usually uh, you want an OGG file, O -G -G file for the audio. And a lot of times I'll download sound effects and they might be in another format. And although you can use MP3 or WAV formats, uh, Godot just works well with G, uh, OGG files. So uh, I wrote this script that I will either give it a file name and an output or if I run the script without giving it, it's going to prompt me to select a file. It's going to list the files, all the MP3s and WAVs in my current directory. And then it will either ask me for an output or use that file name as an output, just replacing the extension with OGG. And then I'll use FFmpeg to convert that to an OGG file. So basically, I'm just taking my MP3 or WAV file and converting it to an OGG file. But lots of times when I do this, I don't need or want the original file. So I have here to ask if you want to remove the original file. And I have the default as yes, but let's say I convert it and I click yes and then I go to listen to it and for some reason it didn't convert right or I, I just didn't want to delete it. I didn't, I didn't want to lose that. So now I check, okay, instead of saying delete, I say trash GIO. So let's, let's have a look at this script. So again, I'm in a directory here and I've got two MP3s and a WAV file. So all I have to do is type in 2 um, og. And again, I can give it a file name and an output name, but if I don't, it's going to use FZF to list files. I can select one of these, it converts it, and then I can just hit enter here and it moves it to trash. So again, if I list it out, you can see now it's been replaced with this OGG file. Let's do it to another one. I can do it to this MP3, yes. And I can do the WAV file, yes. And then I can list out and you can see I now have converted them all to OGG files. And if I was to go to my trash, they're all right here. If I go, ah, I didn't want to delete the originals, I can just say restore. And when I go back over here, I can list them out. And now I have the MP3s, the waves, and the OGG files. So that's a, a use case scenario for you. But I do hope that you found this useful if you ever want to have a script that deletes files. But, you know, sometimes it can be scary having a script delete files. Moving into trash may be a better option. Uh, again, I've been using uh, Linux and writing shell scripts uh, for... 18 years now, and I've never had to do this before, but it could be a good practice. But again, this is specific 
to Linux systems with GIO installed. So it may not be as compatible if you're moving to other systems such as uh, Windows or Mac OS because, you know, you can run Bash natively on pretty much anything, Windows and Mac, and I believe Bash is the default shell on Mac OS last time I checked or uh, whatever they call their operating system. Uh, so, yeah, you got to think about that. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link in the description. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.